We'll solve Indiana's three-point shooting woes on this episode. Let's dive into these numbers. Let's get into it. One for three on the way. Oh! Hello, guys, and thank you once again for joining me on Indiana Sports Connection. I am your residential anchor, Aaron. Thank you so much for being here and being part of this Indiana Hoosiers, Colts, and community on here. Really means the world to us down here with all the work that we're doing. We have a lot, a lot of stuff to break down today, and this is going to be maybe a little bit different type of episode. I'm really going to dive deep into the numbers of the three-point shooting of Indiana's team and how they can like make this better going forward hope all of you had a great weekend happy monday to everybody i'll tell you what my wife has been making this homemade bread here it is right here and it is absolutely fantastic the entire house smells like bread all the time which uh is great for me because i love the smell of bread i love the smell of bread baking and uh i've just been doing so much more research on food as i age and just all the chemicals in our food and it's i just want to do things in a more natural way so thank you to my wife for making that homemade bread but without wasting any time let's get into talking about the hoosiers because we're going to break down today what is going on with them with i've seen a lot of comments i've had rolling in and i had a really great comment from kenneth on the channel and it really made me want to do this episode and break down all of these numbers what the guys we have coming in what they'll be projected to do next year we'll look at guys who played other places then came to indiana what does that indicate to us and then overall just what do we think the entire team you know will look like next year based on these predictions based on these outcomes and without further ado we're just gonna like jump right into it but if this is your first time here welcome to indiana sports connection i am your residential anchor aaron hit that subscribe button down below hit that thumbs up button that gets us out to more Hoosier fans so we can grow this Hoosier community across the country across Indiana and across the globe because there are Hoosier fans everywhere and I thank you very much for subscribing to the channel it's absolutely free there's no cost to you and hillbilly monkey has been working tirelessly on these statistics because he's going to bring them up here in just a second and we're going to get into talking about the stats of what the three-point shooting what it was last year what it was in the previous three seasons and then what realistically we need to project for next year that we can solve these three-point shooting problems so without further ado let's get into talking about the indiana hoosiers all right so First things first, let's look at last year's statistics. Hillbilly Monkey, let's bring up those statistics from last year and so we can see all of the numbers on three-point shooting. Then we can see the numbers that we're going to have to take out. Let's go to this nice, beautiful location. And so right here, we can see everybody from last year. So our team totals, we made 166 threes on 513 attempts. What we'll be losing, Xavier Johnson, 11 for 30, we'll be losing that. Walker, two for 17. We'll be losing that Ware, 17 of 40. Gunn, 17 of 50. And Banks, five of 20. We will be losing all that production. So let's subtract that out of there. So our 166 to 513 turns into 114 uh, of 356 if we take those numbers out. 32%, that's what we shot last year. When we take out the guys that are leaving, we're still at 32% at 114 and 356 attempts. So what do we have coming in? We have Carlisle coming in. We have Rice coming in. So Carlisle and Rice, Carlisle was 32 of 100 last year and Rice was 36 of 131 last year. So let's add that into the mix. So after we, we take out what we lost and then we add in what we're adding, and we end up with where 182 makes on 587 if we just add those guys based on last year's numbers. And then we're gonna, and what I really wanna get away from in this episode is the assumptions. The assumptions that a guy's gonna shoot more three pointers coming into Indiana. The assumption that his, his percentage is gonna change. So really to like look at that, let's look at two players that transferred to Indiana Parker Stewart and Miller Cop. Let's look at their numbers 
and how they performed at their schools before and then how they performed at Indiana. So let's bring those up there, Hillbilly Monkey. So we can see Miller Cop here. He was, his three point attempts a game was 2.3 as a freshman, 5.3 as a sophomore, 4.3 as a junior there. And then it dropped an entire shot a game to 3.1 in a when it came to Indiana. Then it recovered as a senior. He shot 4.1. So he never, he never shot more at Indiana than he shot at Northwestern. That's just the fact, Jack. That's all there is to it. We look at the same thing with Parker Stewart. So Parker Stewart, he at Pitt as a freshman, he attempted 5.8 three-pointers a game on average. At UT Martin, he, he shot 8.2 three-pointers a game. Then when he came to Indiana, he shot 4.0 three-pointers a game on average. So my point of doing this is we've never had any indication that uh, from the numbers of players that have come in, and I also looked at some other players like Rob Finnessy or guys that were on the team when Mike Woodson got here, but there's no indication within the numbers, and this is very important, that would suggest to you that a player is going to go from and this is the next thing I really want to look at. So Stanford, I just want to look at Stanford stats from last year. And if we look at, let's just look at where Stanford ranked in three-point shooting. Last year, Stanford ranked 86 in three-point shooting. And that's where Kane and Carlisle is coming from. And Washington State, they ranked 301 in three-point shooting. So they did not shoot many three-pointers at Washington State where Miles Rice played. I'm just trying to get a good grasp of like what these guys did there, other players did other places before they came to Indiana, and then what they did at Indiana. And is there any indication that these guys are going to shoot more or a better percentage at Indiana? We're going to break this all down for you right here. So for indiana stats you know we take away the players that left and then you add carlisle in he was 32 of 100 carlisle was at stanford last year and rice was 36 of 131. so projecting into next year what will indiana have to do to improve their three-point shooting and also i want to put this stat up here because so Indiana at the three point line, they were negative 3.5 was their differential. That is a huge differential. That's almost like starting every game 10 and a half points behind before the game even starts because you're not shooting enough three pointers. And I'm not one of these. I don't think they need to shoot. I don't think they need to turn into like Alabama. I just think they need to shoot enough so that we can really see the needle move in the right direction and that's what we're going to talk about next like so like let's look at down the line our our volume shooters and Baco last year shot 50 he made 50 out of 153 so if we project him to make 70 next year so put a 70 up there carlisle if he shot 32 of 100 if we project him to make 40 next year i would say that's kind of generous because we're giving him more than he had before and we've never even seen that from anybody who's come to iu rice was 36 of 131 let's project him to shoot make 30 make 45 next year gabe cups was 14 to 39 on the hoosiers last year Let's say he makes 25 this year, and that would be a significant increase compared to just how sparingly he shot last year. Galloway was awful. He was 26 of 100. Say Galloway hits 40 this year. That's my projection that Galloway hits 40. Renew was 15 of 45. Let's say Renew makes 20 this next year. So, so we're getting all these numbers together. Tucker... We have no clue on Tucker, so I'm just putting him down for he's going to make 10. Leo was 9 of 19 last year. I don't think Leo's going to play as much this next year with the guys we have coming in. I just put Leo down for 5. Newton, we've seen nothing out of Newton at, so far. Maybe he will be great. Maybe he won't be great. But I'm just putting him down for 5 this next year. And then Balo, I have him down for 0. So if you add up all my numbers, 70, 40, 45, 25, 40, 20, 10, 5, and 5, that comes out to 260. So that would be 
that would be increasing the three-point usage a lot for Indiana to get them up to 260 makes in this next season. That would be a 100 more makes than we had last year. So how many would we have to realistically have to shoot this next year to get up to 260? If we wanted to be, if we're at 40%, which would be a really, really high mark, we'd have to shoot 650. So a more realistic number, I mean, if we made... If we made 260 out of 700, we'd be at 37%. If we made 260 out of 750, we'd be at 34%. That would be a more realistic number. Now, do you think Mike Woodson, and he has time to change this, but do you think Mike Woodson, after watching him for three seasons, is going to, is he going to increase our three-point shooting from one from only 513 attempts to 750 attempts that would put us at making that would put us like more in the top 100 of three point shooting teams and that would have us making 34% and making 260 three pointers out of 750 so that's basically it right there indiana this next year will have to shoot 200 more three-pointers than they did last year. But let's look at what the teams did in the previous two seasons. So I do just want to bring this stat up real quick because it's important. So two years ago when they had uh, Miller Cop and Parker Stewart, they shot 596 three-pointers. That's the most they've ever shot with Mike Woodson as a coach. Can he increase that number from... Like the most he's ever shot, 596 to 750, that would be, here's what really has to happen. Here's the lowdown. You just have to prioritize the shooting. You have to run some stagger screens on the outside. You have to run some action on the outside so that guys are going to get open. Or else it's really, really going to be difficult to get to that number 750 or even more. I mean, you look at like some of these teams, they're, they're shooting in the thousands of three-pointers a year i don't want to be the guy to sit here and be like we're bringing these guys in it's like you know pump the brakes blah 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 but the bottom line is these numbers don't lie and players that have went from another school to indiana their three-point numbers no matter how good they were or how bad they were decreased when they came to indiana there's no indication that the usage of these guards is going to increase their three-point shooting as they play at Indiana. Now, Mike Woodson has a press conference in May, and we're going to find out some stuff from that press conference, what he's going to say about the team, if he's going to maybe change his ways. He has an opportunity right there. But I would say to you, Mike Woodson, and the coaching staff, if you're watching this right now, these numbers don't lie. This is modern basketball. If you want to keep your job, you have to make this change and you have to prioritize shooting. We have to make, I would say, 800 attempts. We need to have 800 attempts this next season because, yeah, Newton could maybe shoot more, Cups could shoot more, and Carlisle, all these guys could shoot more if they are put in the position to do it. And Mike Woodson has said over and over and over again, you know, I got to put these guys in position. It's my job to put them in position. You're not doing that. You're not putting them in position to win. You're not even giving them a fair opportunity to win these games when you're playing them the way that you're playing them. That's something off the subject that I thought was hilarious when I was watching the last video was Chet's comment. And if you look closely at that comment, who forwarded it to somebody? Wilbur Mullet, there he is right there. Hillbilly Monkey, isn't that your cousin? Nah, Wilbur Mullet, he ain't my cousin. That's my grandpappy's cousin's uncle. Well, nonetheless, you know, the gene pool for Hillbilly Monkey, it's the water so, so shallow in that gene pool, there's not even a lifeguard on duty. I'm pretty sure you told me that was your cousin before. No, nah, hell no, that ain't my cousin. There's a whole love triangle going on between Hillbilly Monkey, the Chicken Nugget, and the bear over here because... Maybe it's because he's never had a home. He needs me, he needs me, he needs me, he needs me. 
the chicken nuggets in love with the hillbilly monkey and the the bear he's just uh just a pot smoking idiot you know so but i hope this episode it was a little bit different it wasn't so much like my opinion on this and my opinion on that thank you kenneth for leaving that comment you can see that on the last video i put out but it's a really good comment and he was breaking down these projections which really made me want to like jump into all of this stuff and like really kind of like see for myself like what it all means what it, where it's all going we still are going to have major major problems unless we sure up this three-point shooting epidemic pandemic whatever you want to call it in indiana because look we need to shoot more we need to shoot more from the outside everybody knows that but the coach i guess so you know there's only one thing left for do to do and that's for me to get my gear and bring it on in here because you're gonna bunk with me buddy we're gonna be buddies we're gonna be pals we're gonna wrestle around come on mike woodson like let these guys let them free let them shoot from the outside so that we can have a competitive team and then balo he will still get his points he will get his putbacks this will make everything easier for the team if we just get the ball moving and it's more free flowing the coaching staff and everybody there needs to take the stubbornness off of everything they do and actually start to look at what this really means for this team and there's no way to win with a team that shoots this bad on three pointers and shoots this bad from the free throw line. It doesn't matter what you do because the differential on this, Indiana is behind so much on the free throw line and three point shooting. When they start the game, we got to turn it around. We got to do a 180 on this. And until that happens, I can't sit here and lie to all of you fans out there. Now, we are on our way to 1,000 subscribers. I am looking at some really cool things to give away for 1,000 subscribers. What would you prefer? Like some type of memorabilia? It's got to be within reason, less than $100. I don't want to spend more than $100 on it, but I've been looking at some memorabilia and some different things that I might give away at 1,000 subscribers. Tell me what you think about that in the comments down below. I will be doing another home field apparel giveaway at 900 subscribers. So subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button. You will be entered for the home field apparel and tell me what you want to see for the thousand subscriber giveaway. It's going to be something cool. It's going to be a piece of memorabilia or something, but tell me what you would like to see given away on the channel. But hopefully this just made you kind of like feel I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm just trying to give you the real aspect of what goes on at Indiana and Indiana basketball. And hopefully we can, I want to see all of this stuff happen so that we can just be a badass top 20 team next year the whole time. And we can win the Big Ten or at least have a chance to win the Big Ten and get to the Sweet 16. That would be very satisfying as an IU fan because we've not really seen that happen in a while. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, stay classy out there, Hoosier fans. These days, I think cybersecurity is now as important as physical security. That's why when I'm online, I use NordVPN. NordVPN uses next generation encryption to keep my passwords and data safe, which is especially important when I'm traveling and I'm on public Wi-Fi, which is more vulnerable to hacking. I'm sure a lot of you are going to be traveling for the holidays this summer. Use NordVPN, one account that will protect all your devices and computers. And with their 30 day money back guarantee, you have nothing to lose.